Welcome to another episode of Code This Not That, where we try to write the best code possible and avoid the bad stuff. Today we're going to look at Intersection Observer and how to determine the visibility of elements in the DOM. This is a very useful tool because you can use it for things like infinite scroll, lazy loaded images, and animations. In today's video, we'll look at two different ways we can build out this lazy loaded image feature using nothing but vanilla JavaScript. If you're new here, like and subscribe and grab the source code from Fireship.io. And I'll be giving away the first ever Fireship.io t-shirt. All you have to do is leave a comment below and we'll pick a random winner next week. Intersection Observer is a browser API that we can use to observe the visibility of an element in the viewport. It's currently supported by most browsers, with the main exception being Safari, but there is a polyfill that you can use as needed. I actually use it on Fireship.io to lazy load the comment section. The comments live in Firestore, so this prevents unnecessary reads to the database. And another thing you might notice on Fireship is that page transitions are super fast. This is made possible in part by a library called QuickLink, which uses Intersection Observer to preload all of the links that are visible on the page. So there's all kinds of cool use cases, but let's go ahead and get started by writing some bad code. What we have here is just a basic HTML page, and we have some high resolution images on it that we want to lazy load. So when the user scrolls to an image, it will load it and then do this little CSS animation. The CSS itself is pretty straightforward. We start with an opacity of zero and a transform, and then we fade in by adding this fade class, which sets the opacity to one. Then in the HTML, we'll go ahead and reference a script called app.js, and that'll be a deferred script. Then you'll notice with the images in this page that instead of having a source attribute, they have a data lazy attribute. This is our own custom attribute that we can use to point to the image itself. And then we'll use our JavaScript to set it as the actual image source when it becomes visible in the viewport. The first thing we'll do is grab all of the images in the DOM by using query selector all. Then we'll listen to the scroll event on the window. And every time the user scrolls, we'll be able to recalculate whether or not an element is visible. After that, we can loop over each image and run the calculation. The calculation is determined by the git bounding client rect value. So we'll be looking at the top of the element. If the top of the element is less than or equal to the window inner height, then we know that it's visible. From there, we'll go ahead and read the data lazy attribute. So we know the true source of the image. And once we have that value, we'll just go ahead and call set attribute for the source. And we'll also go ahead and add that fade class to run the animation. So that code's actually very simple and it works, but it's also very inefficient and will very likely cause performance issues. If we go back to the demo, you can see that I'm console pooping every time that calculation runs. By the time we get to the bottom of the page, we've already taken over 3000 console poops. And not only that, but the event listener is still running even after all the images load. So it's doing all the calculations for no reason in the background on the main thread. Let's see how we can use Intersection Observer to clean up this mess. We'll start with a function called lazy load that takes a DOM element as its argument. Then we'll create an intersection observer for each image that we want to lazy load. It has a callback function that has the entries, which are the actual observations on the element. And then observer is the interface that we can use to manage the actual instance of this observer. By default, it will listen to the top level viewport on the document, but you can pass in an options object if you want to listen to a specific div or element. At this point, I wanna make a note that you can use a single intersection observer to listen to multiple images. But in this demo, I'm going to give each image its own observer and I'll show you why in just a minute. The next step is to loop over the entries and see if any of them are intersecting with the viewport. And fortunately, we don't have to do any of our own calculation. We can just call entry is intersecting, which will return a Boolean true or false. However, there are situations where you probably want to do some calculations here. So you have access to all of the bounding boxes for the elements. From here, we need to get the actual image that has intersected with the window, which we can do by calling entry target. And then we can run the same logic that we did in the previous example that adds the attribute and the fade class. Now at this point, we know the image is visible, so we can dispose of the observer by calling observer disconnect. That means we won't have any unnecessary work happening on the main thread like we did in the previous example. And it's also why I set up an observer for each image. The last thing we need to do in this function is call observe on the target element. And then finally, we'll loop over all of the elements in the DOM and apply this observer to them. When we reload the page, we get seven console logs initially, which are for the seven images on the page. Then as we scroll down, we'll start to intersect with the images and trigger additional console logs. In total, our code only runs 13 times, which is much better than the 4,000 poops we took a few minutes ago. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.